All right, everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm very excited today because we are finally reviewing the Greenworks Pro pressure washers. We've got the 3000 PSI and the 2700 PSI. Now, if you've been kind of doing some research and trying to figure out the most powerful pressure washer or uh, the best alternative to your gas pressure washer in an electric mode, um, you've probably come across these. Now, they are much more expensive and than some, some of the other pressure washers out there. But with numbers like 3000 PSI and 2700 PSI, uh, both, in, both having a brushless induction motor, um, induction motors are typically known to last longer. They're usually more for the commercial grade stuff versus just kind of the DIYer. So with that said, uh, I'm very excited to pop these guys open and check them out. Um, again, they both look pretty similar to me, so we'll probably just unbox one of them um, and assemble that one for you guys and kind of show you that. I'll let you know if there's any differences, differences between the two once I assemble both, but um, if there's not, then we're just gonna show the one. And then uh, we'll cover the features and then we'll test these guys out to see if they actually get these kind of the numbers that they're claiming. All right, let's, let's get into this. Okay, so for the unboxing, I'm gonna go ahead and unbox the 3000 PSI unit. Also, I do wanna make uh, a note, the 3000 PSI is rated 3000 PSI 1.1 GPM. The 2700 is 2700 PSI 1.2 GPM. So in my mind, that just makes me think it's the same thing, but they made some little adjustments, so we're, we're gonna test that. We're gonna look at them side by side and see what the differences are, um, all that kind of good stuff. But let's start off by unboxing this guy, so see what it comes with. Now, there was one from Costco, a Greenworks from Costco that I reviewed, and it came with the Uberflex hose. Uh, it was only 25 feet but that hose is fantastic so hopefully these come with that as well in the picture it shows a blue hose so i'm thinking that's it let's go ahead and take a look right off the bat instruction card and manual yeah this thing is solid guys all right so here we are now a lot of times on pressure washers this piece is plastic not so much on this one hard metal so they're trying to build this thing out very industrial grade um, so we're gonna keep on unboxing, but here's the first piece with all your tips on it. Here comes the hose, and yes, it is an Uberflex hose. You can see it's labeled right on there. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it says Pro Pulse by Uberflex. These hoses are absolutely fantastic. Um, it's rated to 3,100 PSI, so should cover this if this actually gets to the 3,000. Um, We'll just we'll we'll test that though with a little gauge to see what the actual pressure is that we're we're getting what the actual usable pressure is. Uh, but again, these ho these hoses are amazing. They don't kink. Super flexible and pliable. The only issue that I have with it is that it's 25 feet and I prefer longer. Um, so I'll send a, put a link down below for you guys to a 50 footer. Fantastic value. Um, and it yeah the 50 footer is the way to go. That's what I use every day. Um, I'll also send, put a link down to the Flex Zillow hose. It's made by Uberflex, or they use their patent um, for the actual hose itself, but it's in their own color, their own patented color or trademark color called uh, Zilla Green, which kind of matches this. So if you're gonna upgrade it, you can go with that one and have a nice kind of cohesive uh, appearance to your pressure washer. All right, next is the pressure washer wand. And as you can see, guys, it is metal straight through so it's a metal lance uh, basic m22 by 14 i believe fitting on the end of it and then there should be an extension which there is right here you just pop off the cap really easy you just get this to seat down over the o-ring there it is and then you can just twist it down and you'll be good to go now because of the o-ring there's typically no reason to uh no need to use any Teflon tape because the O-ring sits right in there and it seals everything up really, really nicely. So, uh, of course you can, if you're just wanting to be cautious, you can, but uh, I never do and I never have any issues. Uh, next thing on the Lance, we do have a basic quick connect on the front, so really nice and really easy to switch between nozzles. Um, you can see some thread on the, on the Lance. Um, I don't think that's, any concern at all just just know that if it is leaking or anything you can probably tighten that down and then you should be good okay next thing is the pressure washer itself um oh, actually let's see here we have little roll cage piece 
and then the pressure washer itself. So let's go ahead and try and get this guy out of here. Again, this thing is heavy, uh, much heavier than your standard pressure washer that I test typically. There we go. Sit that down. Box is empty. Let's go ahead and get this guy unwrapped. It also comes with this little bag of goodies. Um, one of them came up flying out of here. All right, so this is all just stuff. Now, I, I ordered this from Ho uh, sorry Lowe's.com. The box, the you know, it, it didn't line up perfectly, and there are some scuffs right on the top. So I don't know if it was a return or if that's just how it is. But um, yeah, the unit itself, the, the wheels are a hard plastic, but they do have kind of a softer coating on the end, so that seems nice. They don't wobble very much, so again, very industrial grade, and it seems like it should work really, really nicely. Um, let me go ahead and assemble this real quick. We'll start off by putting on the extension. Uh, should go, yeah, like this, and this should be, oh, interesting. Um, hmm. So typically, it's just push pins, you push them right in. Uh, this one is not, you actually have to screw something through it looks like, and mine is damaged a little bit. I have a little dent here, so hopefully that doesn't hinder me from getting in. You can see it's even a little bit chipped with a little bit of rust coming through, or a little bare metal at least, which could rust, but um, I'm not too concerned about that right now. As long as it fits in, I'm not concerned with it. It's very, very strong, no flex to it, and it has a nice little rubber coating on the top. All right, this is gonna be a problem. Unfortunately, this piece slides over these ones, um, and because of this, it's pinching it and I'm not able to get it over. So I'm gonna go grab a tool and try and straighten this out to get it in there. All right guys, so I was able to bend that piece out a little bit and get it to fit over the sleeve. Um, so that's totally fine for my testing purposes and kind of showing you guys how to assemble, but it is a little bit disappointing. I mean, this is a $400 pressure washer, and to have that already bent, again, it does kind of look like it was returned, so I don't know. Um, that could be the cause of it, but whatever, we'll keep going. So let's see here, little attachment pieces. Looks like you have these two pieces that are gonna go on the back of it that will be cord storage for the power cord. Then we have some bolts. Um, well, we have some bolts. We've got a whole nother bag. Hopefully, hopefully we're good. Yeah, here's a bunch of more screws, bolts and things. Okay, so these two black bolts right here, they lay flush and they have a little uh, squared off piece on the end. So that's just for this inner piece here. Let's see if we can get it through. There we go. Gotta get it to adjust a little bit. Bam, there we go. And then you have these little winged pieces and that's just the nut that we can just screw it on here. Is that righty tidy from, yeah. So there we are, that one is on. I'm gonna work on this one. This one's a little bit wonky. Um, see here. Yeah, you just kinda have to play with it to get it to fit. Okay, so I've got that all set up. We're gonna go ahead and adjust the pressure, the pressure washer now and stand it up and uh, bolt on all the rest of the stuff. So here are the, like I said, the pieces for the cord storage. And the cord's gonna come back here, so they should store right here. So again, for the cord storage, you have the actual little L piece that it stores right on, and then you have this little piece that sits flush onto the uh, tubing and then this will go over the top of it so that you can actually adjust it. Um, meaning you can leave it wrapped up and then when you want to unwrap it, you can just flip it over so it slides right off and makes it easier for you to unravel your cord. So here you go guys, just so you can see it. One there, one goes over the top. It's lined up over this piece. Slide this guy down. Which may be even easier just to take it off and get it to line up. There we go, and then we can put it in. There we go. 
and do it as however tight you want it so that it moves. All right, I'm just gonna do the other one now. I went ahead and moved it back to a horizontal position. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put the metal uh, backing piece. Now this will hold your uh, pressure washer hose and then on this side you have another little piece. So you set this in, line it up with the holes and then this guy goes over the top and this will hold your pressure washer wand. So I'm gonna go ahead and just use the four bolts that they give you, screw this in and then we should be all set. All right guys, so that is it. We're all assembled. The last thing that comes in the bag is the turbo nozzle. So you can go ahead and take that and they do have a place for it for storage right there on the whole unit right here. So we're good to go. Uh, let's go ahead and cover some of the key features. Um, actually, I'm gonna go ahead and, and assemble the 2700 now. Make sure that there's no difference. Make sure everything's the same. And then we'll start going over features. Okay, so I've got both of them assembled now, and the assembly process was exactly the same for both. We're gonna do a full walk around and see if we can spot any differences between these two units. Um, as of right now, the only difference I notice is the color. Uh, the 3000 is all green, all the metal work and everything is green. On the 2700, it's black. Um, on the 3000, the motor piece, the pump piece that's hanging out is black, and on the 2700, it is silver. Uh, let's see here, soap dispensing tank. Looks exactly the same. I had heard that it's a gallon. I don't know that for sure, but I heard it's a gallon. Um, let's go ahead and do a full walk around. Exact same hoses, exact same storage in the back. Exact same wheels. Um, again, just different colors, but same wheels. Same nozzles that it comes with, same pressure washer wand that it comes with. I don't see anything different between these two so far. Let's go ahead and flip them horizontal and see if we can sp spot any differences that way. And I am not noticing anything different between the two of these. I'm gonna take some measurements real quick and see if we can spot anything that way. Okay guys, so I'm just gonna take some general uh, basic measurements, just of the, the units themselves. Not so much of the roll cage and things, because it does look exactly the same. But uh, from end to end, we're at 10, basically 10 and a half inches. And on the 3000, exactly the same. And we'll go front to back. 13 and a half inches, front to back over here, exact same. Got a little motor and pump piece sticking out. Just this first piece I'm gonna measure, uh, just under two inches. Yeah, same exact thing guys. So I'm not noticing any differences um, just based off the appearance of these machines other than color. So let's go ahead and test these guys out. Um, real quickly though, I'm gonna flip one of them up and go over the features. All right guys, so I finally did actually find a difference. And on the 2700 model, you can see the water inlet is facing here sideways and the water outlet is here. That's where you connect your pressure washer hose. Um, both facing the same direction right here. On the 3000, on the other hand, the outlet is in the same place where you connect your pressure washer hose, but the inlet for your garden hose uh, is facing down. So this one would be harder to operate facing up. You're, gonna, you're definitely gonna have to flip it over on its side run it horizontally so you can access that, that port. So feature number one, again, again, exactly the same on both these units, is that they can be operated side up, uh, horizontally like this, and then they can be flipped up to be stored vertically. Now, can they be used vertically? I don't see why not, um, other than the fact that your inlet, it's gonna, the water's gonna have to come up as opposed to just sideways, but I don't see why you couldn't technically operate them this way. Um, but again, it is nice for storage to be able to flip it up and tuck it away. Okay, now the features on these are both exactly the same 
other than that water inlet and outlet valve that I just showed you. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and start off with the tips. So really nice metal storage for your tips. You do get a 15 degree, 25 degree, 40 degree soap dispensing nozzle and a turbo nozzle. Next, we'll come over to the pressure washer hose that they give you. Now again, like I mentioned, this is a Uberflex hose by, Pro, by ProPulse. Um, fantastic hose. This one is 25 feet in length. So if you want a longer one, I'll link that down below for you guys. You can get it in 50 or even 100 really, but um, the 50 is where I think it operates best. And it does have a nice little storage piece here for you and a little bungee that comes across to hold everything together, which is a nice little feature. Coming over to the side of the unit, you have your water dispenser, or your, sorry, your soap dispenser. Um, now I never use these, I always use a foam cannon instead because you can see here that the, the soap dispenser comes all the way up to here and connects right before your outlet. So meaning that all the soap's gonna go all the way through your hose which I do not like because now when I don't want any soap, there's still residual soap left in that hose. So I don't like that. I always use a foam cannon that goes onto the front of the pressure washer instead, or of the pressure washer wand. So I'll put a link down below um, and a video up here for you guys so you can take a look at different foam cannons. Uh, right on the side of the soap dispensing tank, you do have a quick start guide, which is nice that they give that to you so you can remember how to do you know, the procedure to get everything going. Right down here you do have your wheels and they do feel nice. They are plastic, but they have a little bit of a textile softer feel. Um, so I think they should go over, over everything really nicely. Now coming around the back of the unit, you do have your storage for your hose and as I, or sorry, storage for your power cord. As I said, this is a 35 foot power cord. It's 14 gauge and it does have a ground fault interrupt uh, plug to it so you can reset it and do all the good stuff. Um, the knobs for you to store your hose, again, you can flip them and you can just slide it off, making it easier to get to work. Uh, you do have these nice little plastic knobs here, so when you store it horizontally, um, they sit on that and it sits nice and flush. And finally, we're gonna go ahead and come around to the other side, and you do have your pressure washer wand with the metal extension and the quick connect at the end. All righty guys, I am glistening. It's very hot in here. Uh, it's summer in San Diego and the weather is super nice but a little bit muggy. Uh, we have a little bit of humidity in the air so it's hot and I don't have air conditioning in my shop. So let's go ahead and go towards the door get some air and uh, get these things tested. We're going to test these out. We are going to use all the factory components on this. Uh, I do recommend upgrading them. I'll put a list of upgrades that I like down in the description below but we're going to be testing everything as is and seeing what numbers we actually get from these units. Um, yeah let's go, let's go test it out. And one last thing guys is right on the top here you do have your power button. It's a basic just on and off. Really easy to use um, and that's it. Okay guys so first off I want to apologize for the beeping in the background. Uh, one of the tenants in my complex here moved out and they're redoing it so there's a forklift and they're working back and forth. Anyways uh, I have the unit all hooked up. Water is on hooked up to it. I have my pressure washer hose. I did connect a quick connect to it. Um, I'll link these down below for you guys as well. I always suggest quick connects that makes your life so much easier. But for my purpose today, it's so that we can uh, plug in this pressure gauge and test and actually see exactly, exactly what the pressure is coming out of this unit. So um, it's right in line, as you can see. Now, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the water on all the way, let it come through. We're gonna pull the trigger for a little bit, let it, the water run through, get any air bubbles out before we fire it on. All right, so it looks like we've got a nice consistent stream. Um, not, not kind of shooting or spurting or anything, so I'm gonna go ahead and fire it on. Okay, two things, very interesting. It took a little bit of, a t a little bit of time once I turned it on to fire up. Pretty short, but you know, nothing crazy, just something to note. Um, Number two is it does not have the total stop system. So as you can see, it does run constantly. Um, with that being said, it's relatively quiet. It's quieter than a pressure washer if you pull the trigger and have it running. Um, but let me go ahead and grab my phone real quick. We'll test the DBA, or sorry, the DB decibel rating of it and see how, how loud it actually is. 
All right, guys, so induction motors are known to be a little bit quieter. However, let's see here. Sitting at about 76 decibels, so I believe that is quieter than one running. But let's see, it does jump up a little bit as I pull the trigger, so let's see that. Sits between 79 and 80 decibels. It's definitely not quiet. It's definitely quieter than a gas unit, and if you're getting the pressure that we actually are expecting, then that's cool. So again, guys, this is the 2700 1.2 GPM unit. We're gonna be testing this one first. I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the 15 degree nozzle first, and we'll test the PSI. Alrighty guys, so with the 15 degree nozzle, I am getting a fluctuation in the pressure. Um, it does say that it has jet flow technology, which means that it states that it adjusts the PSI depending on the nozzle. Uh, for me, it's just orifice size that would do that, so I don't know if there's something internal or not. But as you can see for me, um, I'm gonna try and pull the trigger and see if I can get it to do the same thing. But it has a little bit of a variance in it. Hang on one second. And as you can see guys, just backfilled pressure. We are at the 3000 mark, but usable pressure. As you can see, it started off kind of at 23 and then quickly jumped up to 25. So we're getting 2,500 PSI out of this um, with the 15 degree nozzle. It's rated at 2,700, so that's very close. There's always a little bit of a percentage of uh, difference, um, especially when we have the pressure gauge down here. So I would say that's pretty accurate. Uh, maybe it's slightly off, but that's pretty accurate. So we'll test the GPM with that in a second, but we're gonna switch over and test out the 25 degree nozzle now. Now again, the degree of the of the nozzle doesn't make any difference on the PSI rating. It's the orifice inside, the little hole inside. If that's larger, it drops the PSI. So I don't know if these are any different, but we'll find out right now. Yeah, it definitely looks like it is a different size orifice. It's sitting at about 20, 2,050 PSI. Yeah, 2050. So uh, we're gonna switch over to the 40 degree nozzle now and we'll see what the PSI is on this guy. Now each PSI will adjust uh, the GPM as well. The lower the PSI, the higher the GPM it's gonna be. So we'll test the 40 now. So with this one we're getting 1900 PSI. Think. Let's see here. There you go. So it is getting 1900 PSI with that one. Go ahead and shut it off. Now, if you listen to that machine, guys, I don't really like the way it's sounding. It sounds like it's fluctuating a lot, which kind of means like it's doing, to me, it just means that it's doing too much work for the motor. Um, trying to adjust. Maybe there is something internally that has that jet flow technology adjusting it because it does seem to fluctuate. Um, I'm not a fan of that, so that's all there is to it. I'm not a fan of that. It just doesn't make me feel like it's going to last that long. Um, so anyways, we're going to go ahead and switch over to a 3.5 millimeter orifice. Uh, I call it a 3.5 millimeter. It's actually 3.5 gallons per minute, but just because it's a 3.5 gallons per minute nozzle doesn't mean you're getting 3.5 mil uh, gallons per minute. So I always call it by millimeter just to make things a little more consistent. Um, so we're going to switch over to that nozzle that will definitely drop our PSI and increase our GPM. So just that's the largest uh, orifice nozzle that I have. So we'll test that and then we'll test the, the gallons per minute rating with that as well. All right. So here is the 3.5 millimeter nozzle, uh, 40 degree. Now, the reason I want to test this is to show you guys that if you want something for around the house, the higher pressure is great for cleaning your deck, uh, driveway, all that kind of stuff, patio. Um, but when you're working on your car, you want to drop that PSI so you're not risking ruining the paint of the car. So I always like to drop the PSI. I prefer to have it around 1100 PSI, but that fluctuates. So we're going to go ahead and test this nozzle. This is the 40 degree nozzle and a 3.5 millimeter orifice. Um, I'll have these linked down in the description for you below as well. A 2.5, a 3.0, and a 3.5. Go ahead and turn the machine back on and let's test this one. Here we go. All right, that 
feels good. With this, we are operating at, it jumps from 1100 to 1200 PSI. So there you go, guys. That's definitely the number I would use for uh, working on your car. Switch over that, you're not gonna be risking damaging your paint. Um, so a 3.5 for this machine for your car. Uh, let's go ahead and hook up my bucket now. We're gonna test the GPM rating for this thing and see what kind of GPM we get. I'm assuming it's gonna be pretty accurate to what it's rated. I'm just really excited to see what the 3.5 gets because if we're getting a high GPM at that 1200 PSI, that's a good option for car detailing as well. Um, again, I just, I'm not sold on how the ma machine sounds. As I said, when you fire it on, it, there's that delay. Let me take you guys over and show you that. All right, guys, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you the delay on this. Um, it almost sounds like a, you know, they call it jet flow technology. It sounds like a jet, a jet engine's warming up. So here you go, it's on. So that's what I'm talking about. I don't know if I like that. I don't know if I like the fact that it's fluctuating on, t on pressure until it gets to its actual rating. It's maybe a little too complicated for me. I don't know. But let's go ahead and hook up the uh, bucket and test the GPM. Okay, so the way we test the GPM is we have our bucket here. It has a measuring guide on the side. Basically, I put the pressure washer into the bucket with each tip going across the board so we could test the flow of each one. Um, I time it for one minute. I use a stopwatch on my phone and time it for one minute. And then um, that way we know what the gallon per minute rating is. Now. Uh, because we still have to test the other machine, the 3000, I'm just gonna run through these pretty quickly. We're just gonna do it, I'm gonna speed the video up, I'll flash the numbers across the screen for you guys so we can see what it is, and just do it that way, and then we can get on to the 3000. So here we go, let me get this ready. We're gonna start with the 15 degree nozzle. Here's the order we're gonna go. Factory nozzles that it came with, 15, 25, 40, and then we're gonna check the 40 degree 3.5 millimeter orifice that I did that test with as well. Here we go. All right, guys, so that actually got some impressive numbers for water flow. Um, again, on that 15 degree nozzle, it wasn't quite what it's labeled at, at 1.2, but it's close, 1.125, I believe is what it was. Um, let me just read these off to you real quick. 1.125, the 25 degree nozzle was 1.375, 40 degree nozzle was 1.425, and with that aftermarket 3.5 millimeter orifice, we got 1.875 gallons per minute, which is huge, guys, for car detailing. Um, that puts it right up there with the active unit because the active unit gets 1100 at two, 1100 psi at two gallons per minute. Um, I think that puts us up there with the Krenzels and all that kind of stuff, guys. So uh, uh, that that gets crazy good numbers. 1.875 GPM at 1200 psi is fantastic. Now you could probably drop it, go to a 4.0 nozzle, and you're going to be getting a full two gallons per minute. Um, so that's really good. With that said, I don't really like the way it sounds. Uh, I test that, we tested the decibel reading on how loud it is and it doesn't show that it's that loud, but I gotta tell you with the constant hum of it, I'm getting a headache. I, I don't like it. However, I'm in my shop and it does echo in here and everything else. So keep that in mind. It's not a huge hindrance. Usually you're working quite a ways away from it, especially if you get that 50 foot hose. And then uh, noise really isn't an issue. So. Um, Again, I don't know the longevity of the machine. I don't know. It's an induction motor, so it should be pretty good. Um, but with that jet flow technology that it seems to have with that fluctuation, I don't know. But uh, so far, the numbers, I am very, very, very impressed. I'm very happy with those numbers. So we're going to go ahead and switch over to 3,000 uh, PSI unit now and test that. I'm going to run through these tests pretty quick. You understand exactly what I'm doing now throughout the whole test. So I'm going to run through the numbers pretty quick and just kind of flash them up for you. And then we'll... Uh, be done with this one. Alrighty, so now I have, I can't see it, but it's right there. We have the 3000 PSI unit hooked up, the Greenworks Pro 3000. Um, same thing, I'm gonna run through the nozzles um, and then we'll post the numbers. One other thing that I'm gonna do is run the same exact 15 degree nozzle from the 2700 on this one and see if it gets the exact same number. If it gets the exact same numbers, then we know that all they're doing is adjusting the orifice size and the units themselves are the same. Uh, but we'll run through it. Maybe it'll get the same numbers with this 15 and they are just the same, but we'll, we'll go ahead and test it out and see. Here we go. All right, guys, I've purged the water out. Uh, everything's plugged in. I'm gonna go ahead and fire it on, see if it has that same delay that the other one does and test it out. Yep, same delay, 
same thing, no total stop system. Let's go ahead and test it now. Again, the last one we're getting 2,500 PSI. All right, so right off the bat, I'm gonna say they're not the same unit because this one's back pressure is above 3,000 PSI. Um, so again, I, I am gonna test the other one right after this one, but this one is actually getting about 2,700. Twenty seven hundred PSI. Now, because that jet flow technology, again, when I first pull the trigger, it jumps up to three thousand, drops down to twenty five, and then settles at about twenty seven. Here we go. So there you go. Really quickly, guys, before I move on to the other nozzles, I'm going to test the other one and see if it gets anything different. So here's the nozzle, sorry, here's the nozzle from the 2700 unit. Now because they rate that one 2700 at 1.2 GPM, this one at 3001.1, in my head it just means it's got a smaller orifice, uh, which would push up the PSI and drop the, G, the GPM. So let's see, again, this is from the 2700. On that unit where we're getting 2500 PSI, so let's see. And no, they are not the same. So they definitely did something to the motor, to the pump. They tuned it a certain way because this nozzle from the 2700 is getting the exact same numbers. We're getting that 3,025 sitting at 27. So they are different machines. Now I'm gonna go ahead and run over and put this back and then test out all these nozzles. Next up is the 25. 2200 PSI. Yep, 2200 PSI, 40 degree nozzle. All right, so this one's different. We're actually getting 23, about 2350 PSI out of the 40 degree nozzle, so that's different than the 2700. The orifice size is definitely different on this one than the other. Here we go. There you are, now we're gonna go ahead and try that 3.5 millimeter. And this one is actually getting less PSI with this 3.5 millimeter orifice than the 2700 was. We're sitting at 1,000 PSI. So that's interesting. Well, it'll be interesting to see what the GPM is with that. Because it's dropping so much, I'm assuming we're gonna get even more GPM, but we'll find out. Let's go ahead and test that now. Okay guys, so there it is for that last unit. It's interesting the numbers changed up a little bit on the GPM. Um, just really quickly, I'll run through the two numbers between the 2700 and the 30 uh, and the 3000. Okay, with the 15 degree nozzle that it came with, the 2700 got 1.125, the 3000 unit got the same. With the 25 degree nozzle that it came with, the 2700 unit got 1.375, the 3000 unit got the same. Uh, with the 40 degree uh, nozzle that the unit came with, now remember the 3000 one, for some reason that one had more PSI than the 25. Um, so that was different than the 2700 unit. Um, it could just be a mistake that they accidentally put that orifice in with the package and not the other one, I don't know. But here are the numbers. With the 40 degree nozzle on the 2700 PSI unit, we got 1.425 gallons per minute. And on the 3000, we got 1.325 gallons per minute. Um, now this, the PSI was substantially higher on the 3000, but you're losing uh, GPM there. And now when we go to the 3.5 millimeter orifice, on the 2700, we got 1.875 GPM. And on the 3000, we only got 1.75. Now that's still nothing to, to nothing bad there. Um, it's really just, a, just dependent on if you want 20, your max PSI to be 2500 usable or 2700 uh, PSI usable. Um, if that 200 PSI is important to you, I would go with the 3000 unit. Otherwise, I would save the money um, and just go with the 2700 PSI unit. For me, the water flow is more important and with that little adjustment, you're able to get more water flow out of it for some reason, at least between these two units that I just tested. So um, that is it, guys. I'm trying to think of anything else. I think that's it. Um, we do have another pressure washer review coming up. It's the Westinghouse. Um, got a lot of uh, uh, requests for that one. It's the Westinghouse EPX3050. That one will be coming up next, so make sure you guys or, uh, like the video, make sure you're subscribed, and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss that. And we'll see you guys on the next one.